Welcome to Vientiane, the capital city of the mysterious country of Laos. Now this is my first time here and to be honest I don't know all that much about this country or city. So yeah, let's go have a look around and see what Vientiane has got to offer. So we are now in the center of Vientiane here. I just left my hotel and I'm going to show it to you later. First we're going to go have a look around. So I got here yesterday afternoon, flew into Lao from Bangkok on Air Asia. And yeah, if you want to know what Air Asia is like, the video is on the channel. And yeah, I'm going to visit a few places in Lao over the coming days. This is my first time here, so I want to get a taste for this country and see what it's like. It is definitely one of the least visited countries in Asia. And yeah, it's not like nobody has ever heard of Lao. It is on the backpacker trail, but it is certainly much less popular than its neighbors. But yeah, let's see what the capital of Lao is like. First impressions, it doesn't seem all that modern. Definitely fewer modern buildings than in Thailand. Right, so this is a main avenue, I guess. And there is some kind of big monument over there in the distance. So I'm gonna go check that out now. And I think that you can go up there because I can see people at the top. Let's head up there. I'm sure that we'll have a nice view to get our bearings over Vientiane. Right, so as we are here at the Patushai Victory Monument, that is what it's called. Let me just give you a few details about the history of this very fascinating little-known country of Lao. So the modern country of Lao traces its roots back to a kingdom called Lanshang. And that kingdom existed from the 13th to the 18th century. And after that, the kingdom of Lanshang split into three kingdoms. Vientiane here, Luang Prabang and Champasak. And those three kingdoms were annexed in 1893 by French Indochina. So they became a protectorate under French colonial rule. So then they were part of French Indochina, which was a colony that also encompassed Vietnam and Cambodia. And then after World War II, Lao gained its independence in 1953, but then a civil war happened between the communists and the monarchy. And the communists came out victorious. So Lao, as an independent country, started as a monarchy but then came under communist rule, which it is to this day. And yeah, this monument right here was built in the 60s to celebrate independence from the French. We are now heading up to the top of the Victory Monument. The entrance fee was 30,000 kip, which is about 1 euro 50 or something like that. And yeah, there is a small exhibition here explaining the history. And we are reaching the top here. We have a nice breeze up here. Let's check out the view. This is the main avenue that I walked down to get here. And then the Mekong River is somewhere over there. So the Mekong River is actually the border between Laos and Thailand. Because the capital of Vientiane here is very, very close to Thailand. It is right on the border actually. Right, that was the Victory Monument. And now I'm gonna go get some coffee at a place that was recommended to me. So this place is called KOG or KOG, Le Triomphe, the Triumph in French. And yeah, this is a pretty cool coffee shop, French style, and they got croissants, lots of French baked goods, and I just got myself an iced Americano here and some water. Right, that was a pretty nice coffee shop there 
Le Triomphe. And now before we continue exploring the city, I just quickly wanted to show you my hotel as well. I am staying at the Vientian Boutique Hotel and it is a bit old but very comfortable and in a good location and it also has a pool and this room costs $31 with breakfast included and the breakfast was actually super decent a mix of western and asian options so yeah a sweet deal for a hotel in the city center with a pool now i also wanted to show you the lao kip which is the currency that they have here and it is a bit like the vietnam dong because one dollar is about twenty thousand kip so you are dealing in millions all right guys i am now gonna head to a temple and i'm gonna use an app called loka because this is the only country in Southeast Asia, at least out of the ones I've been to, and I've been to most of them, where you cannot use Grab. So here is the app. It actually looks just like Grab. And I just called a taxi, car. You can also get a bike. And yeah, how much did I pay? I think 50,000 luck, which is about two euros for a I guess two and a half kilometer journey so yeah very reasonable price and here he comes so I guess this is a Chinese car called Nita or Neta and it is electric And here's the car, the Netta. I've never seen these cars before. They might exist in Thailand. But yeah, here in Laos, I've seen quite a few of those. And we are now at the Pha Tat Luang Temple, which is one of the most famous places to visit here in Vientiane. Right, we are now inside the temple complex here. The ticket was 30,000 luck, which is exactly the same price as the monument that I visited before. And yeah, this temple was established in the 3rd century AD, but then it was rebuilt and destroyed many times, including in World War II. So I think that the most recent reconstruction was after World War II. And yeah, this amazing gold stupa is one of the symbols of the country of Laos. What I really like here is that you have this covered part, so you can walk here in the shade and then admire this magnificent gold temple here. All right, so we are now on the other side of the stupa. And yeah, there are more temples here, big ones. Let's see. I am not sure if this is all one complex, but it might be. And then here's the big temple. This one is gigantic. And I was just told by one of the people working here that they are preparing for some kind of event. Didn't really understand him, but yeah, I can't enter right now. So they are doing some preparation for something. But yeah, if you are in Vientiane, definitely come check out this complex here because these temples do look quite impressive. All right, time to head to the next spot. After the temple, I went to a local restaurant and ended up getting some pho, which is a Vietnamese staple. They didn't really have any typical Lao dishes in this restaurant, but the pho was really tasty and it cost less than $2. Alright guys, I just took a motorbike taxi to the Mekong River right here. And not just the river, but this is actually the border between Laos and Thailand. So Thailand is over there. And I am not sure whether this being the border has something to do with it, but as you can see here, this space is completely empty. 
I guess there is some construction going on, but yeah, there's a huge part where there is nothing and then the promenade is here. Now, I'm not sure, but maybe this whole area will get developed sometime in the future. But now, as you can see, it isn't all that nice. And then here you see the flag of the Lao People's Democratic Republic. That is the official name of the country. And then the sickle and hammer. You don't see that in many countries anymore, but you do see it in Laos and of course Vietnam as well. All right, let's go check out the Vientian night market here, even though it isn't nightfall yet. But yeah, this is apparently one of the main attractions here in Vientian. We got slippers, handbags, a lot of clothes, makeup, t-shirts. Some Nike sneakers. So yeah, we have all the 100% original Gucci bags here. And then there we have Cocoy Chanel. Have you ever heard of Cocoy Chanel? I haven't. Yeah, this market seems to be mostly fashion but as you can see the vendors are still opening up here i think in one hour this place will be buzzing more makeup so what i noticed here in vientian and this has something to do with the weather wait a second mr ronaldo playing for Manchester United. That was two years ago, almost. He has been playing in Saudi Arabia for quite a while. So yeah, what I've noticed here is that not much is happening between maybe 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. And I guess it's because of the weather, because it is just too hot. Now at 5 p.m., the city starts to come to life. Now you might be wondering, is Vientian worth visiting and should you include it on your Southeast Asia trip? And I would say it's definitely worth coming here for a day or two. You don't need much more time because the city isn't that big and there isn't that much to see. But you know, it is an interesting place, very authentic, nice people. And that is it from Vientian. I am gonna move on tomorrow and then see some more places in this fascinating but little known country. So yeah, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one. Goodbye.